Welcome back to the channel, guys. Welcome back to the boat gang. We got Project Zippy on the block. All right, this is part six to our ready to run upgrade build series. Okay, uh, today we're actually going to be working on water cooling. We're going to be installing these transom mounted water pickup, running the cooling line, the extra large cooling line to our electronics and out the boat. Okay, uh, we'll probably probably kind of finalize the boat in this video take it out in the next one uh make sure our servo is working make sure the drive line sounds good and uh yeah stick around big b we're not clad our seats previous video with this boat i actually asked my viewers my subscribers what you guys wanted to see for power in the boat uh the stock electronics or upgraded electronics uh i actually had a lot of guys i was surprised i figured you guys would say throw an upgrade in there but um majority of you guys wanted to see the stock electronics first and then um progress to the upgraded okay so what we'll do is uh we'll run the boat on 3s to start off with i'm on i mounted my esc over on the battery tray just to kind of offset some of the weight with the larger 3s battery you know give it a good cg and uh we'll, we'll kind of see what the boat does on 3s and then um you know a couple videos later we'll throw the fly color 90 in with the stock motor it's got a flow pack cat pack we'll throw that on the stock motor run the boat and uh kind of get a, a number or whatever a performance reading and then we'll throw the 6s 2150 kv turnergy motor in 3665 so that's kind of the plan that's kind of the plan you know so um so let's go ahead and get this transom mounted water pickup this is an oxy marine water pickup you get two in the package uh they're actually pretty cheap two for ten bucks i believe okay so um we're going to go ahead and mount this up on the transom. What I'm going to do is use the, the drain hole. Okay, it comes with a drain plug. So I basically just pulled the plug out. And we're going to mount the transom mounted water pickup right there. It actually works really good on my Blackjack 24. You know, um, on my Blackjack 24, it because we're mounting it on, that, on a rubber grommet right there, it actually tends to, like, like, move around a little bit which has been aggravating over the years but um it, it's really no big deal um i guess if you don't want it to move around i kind of recommend i think it's like spinning around on that grommet right there so if you like uh maybe put a little bit of ca on that grommet just to kind of keep it in place and um and use a little bit of marine adhesive when you mount this guy here it, it probably won't spin on you. So you I've know? already got my screw in the transom there. Um, I wanted to mention this. I actually used um, a larger washer that, than what comes with it. Okay, I used a washer that's basically the same diameter as the base. Figured that would help put pressure and keep it from, from spinning around on me. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to basically let's put some Loctite on it. So I got my screw in the through hole there. I'm gonna go ahead and put some some Loctite on it because it will vibrate loose, you know. Oh God, that's a lot of Loctite. Damn, that's a waste. Oh well, oh well. <laughs> All right, so um, I actually oversized the washer that comes on on the 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 set. Okay, I oversized it. The washer I used. It's actually the same size as the base of my water pickup. Okay, I uh, figured that would help prevent it from spinning while it's on the boat. You know, just kind of help keep it in place. So, basically, just going to mount it up. Boom. Pretty simple. Pretty freaking simple. Not too hard. Don't make it too hard. You know, we'll go ahead and put our cooling line in make sure when you when you drill these through holes for your cooling line don't drill them too big you know you want a nice tight fit I, i've drilled through holes in the past for my cooling lines too big and it's such a pain in the butt you got a little bit of water that trickles in the boat you can't figure out where it's coming from you know so i use a stepped bit 
and I, I, I kind of slowly drill it out with my hand. I don't even use a drill, really. I'll slowly drill it out, test the fit, drill a little bit more, test the fit. You don't want to oversize the hole. That's not what you're what you're after. You want a nice tight fitting, something you got to actually press the freaking cooling line through. You know, force it in there, spin it, spit on it. <laughs> All right, so you guys can see I got my little piece of cooling little 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 slither of cooling line here and i just stretch it over my main line and that helps keep the cooling line on your cooling tube or the nipples okay <laughs> he said nipple all right so i'm running my speed control in the battery tray on the right hand side of my boat for side to side weight distribution uh initially like i said we're going to be running this setup so i'm going to be only running a single 3s pack and a large 3s pack at that okay so to uh to kind of keep my weight right running the esc offset uh, later on we'll we'll center it in the boat we may run parallel 3s okay these small packs or uh, when we get the fly color ESC in, we'll be able to run 2S, 2S, or 3S, 3S. But for this initial setup, running single cooling, single 3S battery with the ESC offset. For right now, we're going to cool down the ESC first, okay? Because uh, if you're running single cooling, you want to cool down the speed control first and then the motor. That actually, you know is the most important aspect of your build it's the most uh what do you call it um fragile or delicate you know it you could blow a ES, esc up a lot quicker than a motor <laughs> okay so you want to cool that bad boy down first then we're going to go out the speed control and into the motor and then out the motor and out the boat going to put our little silicone cooling line clamp on it can be a pain in the butt sometimes but i just stretch it get my cooling line pressed in a little slither there then pull your pliers out boom okay and uh get this guy here on our speed control All right, so I'm keeping in mind my final setup. I think I'm gonna use this antenna hole for my out, for my motor. So I made sure I had enough cooling line to go out the boat whenever I switch to dual cooling, okay? I really don't think we'll need dual cooling for 3S, especially with this low KV motor, 45 amp ESC. Don't think we need it for this setup you feel me all right and uh we're just going to use all this for the out that's going to go there and that's going to go there okay so uh, so we got our cooling line in the esc out the esc into the motor out the motor and out the boat okay pretty simple pretty simple i got a 2200 milliamp z 120 c pack just kind of just to do a real quick bench tune, or actually, we're going to grease this ca cable up real quick. All right, we got to we got to tighten down the motor mount, okay, and make sure our steering is nice and smooth, okay. So what I did is I zeroed out my servo on my transmitter, okay. I zeroed it out, made sure it was like straight up and down. I, I centered my rudder, basically, you know, parallel with the sponsons, the keel. And uh, I, I, I tighten down my grub screws. Okay, got a nice bend in it right there to make up the little the difference. Okay, from the stock through hole. All right, and it actually works out pretty good. Before I hit the water, I'm gonna tighten down this top screw, and I'll make sure I have a breakaway screw in. So if we hit something, uh, the rudder's not gonna rip off the transom, which it shouldn't. I've backed everything up with fiberglass panel. Okay. So, um, 
let's go ahead and grease this bad boy up and uh what i've been doing when i grease up my boats i got this this is preschooler building block foam it's like kids foam blocks you know and uh, i use it for battery strap like hold downs all kind of stuff man it's great oh man we actually need to put oh i didn't put no flotation in here so when you build a boat make sure you put flotation in your boat and in your hatch so before i hit the water i'll do that off camera i might even make a separate video we're going to put flotation in here i should have done it before i put my motor in but uh that needs to be done that's very important okay flotation is very important don't forget flotation back to the cable so i use this i put it over the end of my stuffing tube okay it actually works best if you don't put it all the way over it initially because if you're if you're sealing up the end of the stuffing tube you put your grease in there it'll like squirt out so uh i've been using wheelbarrow grease it's been working fine marine grease is ideal okay but uh i usually close up the end of my stuffing tube okay i close it up with that foam got the grease in here okay you guys see me grease it I'll, I'll put my foam on right there and then i'll slide my cable in okay make sure you're if you're using a speedmaster bushing make sure you got grease on these grease dam holes right here just kind of put a little bit of grease in there don't spend too much time on it okay a little bit of grease all right then you push your cable in with that foam just put a little bit of pressure on the foam all right and that usually keeps a lot of the grease in the in the drive line i usually spin my cable in okay spin my cable in with that foam right there and you shouldn't make a big mess you know you shouldn't make a big mess okay like that all right as you can see no grease here and no grease up here okay you guys see that so I'm going to pull my, my foam off. A little bit of grease did come out. Not much. Okay. And then I'm just going to spin my, my flex cable into my coupler. I don't even care. There's grease on my cable. Okay. I've, I've had zero issues with couplers spinning due to grease. And then we're going we're gonna to tighten this down. My adjustable wrench. And we're just going to tighten down the cable. all right get it good and tight not gorilla tight good and tight just tight enough that it's, you know you don't want to you don't want to get it too tight because it'll compress the cable and the cable will actually uh get get smaller and smaller over time the tighter you get it so you know don't go don't go too crazy okay so um made sure i have my gap back here i'm using this speedmaster bushing okay i really really don't even need a gap on this but uh got my bushing pushed all the way into the stuffing tube okay and then i got my little little gap right there okay what i like to do whenever i set my gap some motors some motors when you when you push when you push forward okay they have that play all right so what you want to do when you set your gap you push your cable forward okay you see that push it make sure make sure the couplers push forward okay and then you set your little gap okay so with mine push forward i've got literally about a millimeter and a half two millimeter gap all right so when the cable uh constricts from running big props or whatnot okay it constricts it's not gonna like butt up onto your bushing and spin your cable okay uh these smaller cables you need a gap like larger 0 0.187 0 0.250 cables they don't really need a gap they don't constrict okay so got it greased up actually sounds pretty good nice and smooth okay so now i'm going to actually set my motor okay just going to tighten down my, my grub screws on my motor mount um if your motor's not aligned and it's like got pressure 
the cables rubbing on the Teflon liner up or down or side to side. Uh, it's actually going to create heat. It could uh, heat up your, your stuffing tube and um, melt the epoxy around your through hole. Okay, it can melt your stuffing tube mount. It could uh, break the heat could break your Teflon liner loose. Your Teflon liner could be could like float in the stuffing tube, and it'll actually like it tends to ride up onto your your coupler. If your Teflon liner is riding up onto your coupler, um, it creates resistance in the drive line. Okay, so make sure you got a good alignment. Okay, if it's if it's rubbing, it's creating drag. Drag in the drive line equals heat. More resistance on the electronics, more strain, more power being used. Okay, you got a nice, like smooth, frictionless drive line. You can run bigger props, you know, with lower temperatures. All right, so making sure you got all this lined up and it sounds sounds like that. You're good to go. Okay. So I got the motor mount tightened up. Let's go ahead and, and talk about the, the water pickup and I'll let you guys go. Okay, so um, if you're running a transom mounted water pickup, your best bet is to just uh, get that pickup basically in line with the ride surface. Okay, make sure it's like basically in line with the ride surface. In some cases, you can run that water pickup a couple millimeters higher than the ride surface, okay? And it picks up water, all right? You don't really want to run your water pickup, like, down deeper than the ride surface. You got to see that. If you do that, it's going to create drag, heat your electronics up. It could give you some odd handling characteristics. Think of that water pickup as a trim tab, okay? If it's down in the water that deep or deeper... It's going to act like a trim tab. It's going to want to like, you know, cause the back of the boat to bounce. Erratic handling characteristics. So initially, start off with it right there. If you're getting cool electronics, leave it. Uh, if you want to try for speed and you think your water pickup is slowing you down, raise it up a little bit. Raise it up like that much, a millimeter or two. On my Blackjack 24, I literally run this water pickup right there right there okay uh i think it's because the water breaks off the this back step and it kind of like breaks off and goes up okay so i'm actually catching the spray breaking off the back of the the step right there and that's how i can run my water pickup that high on my 24. you know what i mean but uh I just start off with it in line with the bottom your first few runs if you if you feel like you can pick it move it up move it up but if you do move it up check your temps when you do you don't want to you know have it too high out the water where it's not picking up water cooling things down all right so um i'm gonna get all this ready we're gonna put a bench tune on it in the next video thanks for watching we'll see you next time